Now, direct attached storage has many, many advantages. For example, speed. Now, by direct attached storage, I mean a storage device, hard drive, SSD, whatever, connected directly to a PC, normally over USB. Now, the later versions of USB offer significant speed, and therefore you can get access to high speed uh, storage directly attached to your PC. Now, there are times though when you want to have that storage available on the network because maybe in another room you want access to that storage, maybe because you want to share it amongst multiple computers, and then it's no longer direct attached storage, but it's network attached storage because it's attached to the network. Now, I recently reviewed a direct attached storage unit, the TerraMaster Hybrid D8 here on this channel, and it allows you to add up to eight drives into a single unit, meaning you get RAID capabilities, you can connect SSDs, you can connect NVMe drives, you can connect traditional hard drives, it's just brilliant, you can connect all kinds of things into it. But sometimes you might wanna take all that power of that storage just literally terabytes of stories that you can put in there and make it available on the network. Now, how would you do that? Well, there are different ways of doing it. In this video, I want to show you how you can turn a direct attached storage unit into a network attached storage unit by connecting it to a Raspberry Pi 5. We're going to go into all the details about the difference between direct attached storage, network attached storage, what software we're going to use to do it. We're going to go through the whole thing so that you can take some storage and put it on your network using a Raspberry Pi. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, the biggest difference between direct attached storage and network attached storage is going to be speed. You've probably got gigabit Ethernet in your home, in your home office or at your place of work. Now, you may have 2.5 gigabit, you may have 5, you may even have 10. But if you're that kind of advanced, that you've got that advanced kind of networking, then you've probably already got some fairly sophisticated solutions for your storage. If you're just a normal person like me, then you've got plain old gigabit ethernet. That means you're gonna see a speed reduction of transfers because units like the uh, TerraMaster can offer greater than gigabit uh, transfer speed, much, much higher, especially when you're using the new USB standards, USB 3.2 uh, and so on. And I cover all of that in the review that I've done of the TerraMaster device. But the advantages of going to network attached storage is that it's available anywhere on the network, doesn't have to be directly connected to a particular laptop or a particular PC. Now, assuming you're okay with the lower level of performance, then what we're going to do is we're going to connect the direct attached storage device to a Raspberry Pi using the USB connector. Now, the USB transfer speeds that the Raspberry Pi can achieve are higher than the gigabit Ethernet than it can provide. So now the bottleneck becomes the gigabit Ethernet and not the USB connection to the direct attached storage device. Now, when I talk about direct attached storage, I am talking about this uh, TerraMaster device that I have here, but really it can be any kind of storage that you're connecting via USB, just a normal external hard drive, just one hard drive uh, connected to it. You could be a USB drive, it could be an SSD drive, it could be whatever it is you want to connect to the device, you connect it directly to the Raspberry Pi 5 via the USB. And then you're gonna to need to run some software that allows that to be shared on the network. Now we could do it by hand, we could install uh, Linux and then go through all of the setup, installing the right packages and the right things and edit the configuration files. And in fact, I do have videos here on this channel exactly about how to do that. But in this case, we're going to use Open Media Vault, which is basically a distribution or a set of packages, as you'll see, that you can install, pre-install onto your machine and you get a nice web interface that allows you to uh, manage and share share the storage directly on the network. Okay, so for this video, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 5. You could also do it with a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, probably not worth doing it with a Raspberry Pi 3. You're not gonna get the transfer speeds, uh, particularly over the USB or over the uh, gigabit ethernet. So Raspberry Pi 4 or up, you need a micro SD card, of course, and you're gonna need some kind of external storage connected to it. Now, one thing to note, in all of these cases, it's better if the external storage has its own power supply. In this case, the TerraMaster does. Other popular uh, kind of external hard drives have their own power supply. It is possible to do it with a two and a half inch drive that takes the power from the USB. However, do be careful to make sure your power supply to the Raspberry Pi is sufficient to be able to power both the Raspberry Pi and that hard drive. Okay, so the first step is to prepare the micro SD card. 
Okay, so you need to go into Raspberry Pi Imager. The first thing to do is to pick your device. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 5. Then we need to choose our operating system. Now I'm not gonna put on a full desktop operating system. Instead, I'm gonna to go to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then I'm gonna pick Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. It's a very short download, only 0.4 gigabytes, 400 megabytes. Pick the storage. In this case, I've got one 32 gigabyte SD card, micro SD card in my card reader. Do I want to apply any settings? Uh, no, I don't want to at the moment, so I just go with as it is. Everything will be erased, yes, no problem. And it's gonna go ahead now and write that onto that SD card. Once the SD card has been written, you pop it into your Raspberry Pi and give it a boot up. There is an initial setup screen you need to go through, setting the keyboard, picking a username, choosing a password for that user. And then finally, you'll be able to log in to the Raspberry Pi using a connected a keyboard and a monitor, and then you will have access to the command line. Now at this point, you need to run a command to fetch the install script for Open Media Vault and run it. Now, because you're running on a command line here using a, an attached keyboard, you probably can't cut and paste. There is a way that you could maybe configure a secure shell and then log in and cut and paste, but it's quite easy. It's W get minus O, big O, space minus space, and then it's HTTPS, do it in, in sections. GitHub.com, open media vault hyphen plugin hyphen developers slash install script slash raw slash master slash install, bit of a mouthful, but it's quite easy to type out. Then you pipe that into sudo and then bash, and that will go ahead and start to run that script. It does take several minutes to download and do all the things it needs to do. But once it's done that, you can then, it will automatically reboot, and then you will be given some information that shows you the uh, IP address of your device. It also handily tells you the username and password for the Open Media Vault default login. So what you need to do is point your web browser to that IP address and then use that username and password to log in. And once you've logged in, you can optionally go to network and then to interfaces and change it from being DHCP to having a static IP address. This is optional. I always like to set things like NAS units and things to having a fixed IP address. In this case, 192.168.1.12. You also need to type in the default gateway, which is probably 1.1 on your network and the net mask, which is probably 255.255.255.0. Don't forget also set the list of DNS servers. 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 is a good default one. You may have some other preferred ones for yourself. And then don't forget to apply all these network changes. Once this has happened, don't forget you need to point your browser to the new IP address that you have set. You can also change the host name from the default to something that you prefer. In my case, I'm using OMV Pi, just to show that this is Open Media Vault running on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, now that we've changed the host name and configure the networking, we can now go on to configuring our storage. First of all, let's just set up the dashboard here. Uh, you can pick whatever you like here. You can experiment with it. I'm gonna go with uh, memory, with file systems and CPU utilization. You can play around with that as I said. Okay, so the first thing to do is enable uh, SMB or KIFS. So we go over to here, go to settings, and this will allow Windows machines basically to access your uh, new NAS that we are building. So we just enable that, leave it in work group, and then click save. And then also we want to make sure that we have a user set up as we need to. So let's go to users. Let's go to, now I've got Gary, because that's the user I created on there. We wanna make sure we set a password. So we go in here and type a password, so that when we try to access a share, we will have a password in there for that. Click save. Uh, and at this point, it would be a good idea just to uh, apply the pending settings. Okay, now before you can actually create a, a share, you have to look at the actual disks that you've got and then the file system. So if we click here, we get a list of all the disks. Now, the ones here, SDA, SDB, and SDC are the ones from the TerraMaster direct attach storage. These two here are anything I've got connected to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, internally, for example, I have a, an SSD connected to the Raspberry Pi here using an SSD hat, and I've got a video about that here on this channel. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure this four terabyte drive here, which is in fact two drives in a RAID configuration that the TerraMaster handles all by itself. 
Now, what we're going to do is I've already got something on this disk, so I want to erase it. So we just go over here to wipe. Do we really want to wipe that? Yes, I do. Okay, and let's do that quick. Uh, and that will get rid of what's uh, on there. Okay, so then we go to file systems and we want to add a new file system. I'm going to pick ext4. You can pick your favorite file system there. Selected device, here is that four terabyte drive that we've just wiped. And now we're going to create a file system on it. And once the file system has been created, we now need to mount it. We can see it now here on our list, ext4. And we just save that like that. Now that we have a file system mounted, we go over to shared folders. We click on add. We want to pick a name. So I'm just going to call this 4TB. Select a file system, that one there. Now notice here, sometimes it adds in this relative path for you. If you want it just to be in the root folder with not a subfolder, then you need to change that to just uh, the root folder. So that's what I'm doing there. And there we now have a shared uh, folder uh, ready and on the system, apply the changes. And now once you have a file system created and a shared folder created, you can then go to services. We can now go over to uh, SMB and KIFs. We can add, go to shares now and we can add a new share, select, yep, we're adding the 4TB. And there are different things you can click here. This all depends on uh, how you want to configure SMB KIFs. Most of it's okay uh, for, uh, just leave it like that. You can change it. For example, do you want a recycling bin on there? You can tick that if that's what you want. Okay, if I now navigate over to OMVPI, I can type in my username and the password that I set, remember earlier on, if you remember, and that will now give me access to that four terabyte share, which we've got there. And there it is, it's available, and we can start copying files to it, we can read from it, uh, job done. Now, of course, you can repeat that, because if we go back over to uh, storage here, disks, we can repeat that with whatever uh, hard drive you've got inside of that TerraMaster. In my case, for example, you know, you can hold up to eight drives, so that's a lot to go in here. I've got three in there at the moment, in fact, four, because one of them is already in that RAID configuration. For more details about that particular TerraMaster works, then as I've mentioned, do see my review. But whatever hard, whatever hard drive you've connected, whatever external uh, device you've connected to this via the USB, there you have it. So when it comes to transfer rates, it certainly is the gigabit ethernet that is the bottleneck. The Raspberry Pi 5 can handle it. The TerraMaster can certainly handle it. I cover all the performance of that over in my review video. So I was able to share some drives from the TerraMaster and I was able to saturate my gigabit ethernet uh, right up to over 110 megabytes per second, which is approaching uh, a gigabit uh, bits per second, uh, about 914, I think I was getting. So that's absolutely fine. So you are getting the full power that you can get over your gigabit ethernet using the Raspberry Pi 5. And it is worth noting, of course, that does depend on the storage that you're using. A mechanical hard drive is going to be slower than an SSD, which is going to be slower than an NVMe you know, M2 drive. But assuming you've got fast enough storage, then you're going to uh, fill up the capacity of your gigabit ethernet. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Sims. I really hope you enjoyed this video, how to convert a DAS to a NAS using a Raspberry Pi 5 and Open Media Vault. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.